mental preparation. So as you walk into a room, I want you all to think that. Are you all nice people? There was not much enthusiasm. <laughs> When I talk to younger professional people, they appear to have, that the reason they won't go networking, they don't know it as a scientific uh, or medical uh, condition, but a lot of younger professional people have what we call imposter syndrome. Have you all heard of that? Yeah. They think, I, I'm not entitled to be there. And my message is, to you and everybody else, and people you work with, and your children, and, and grandchildren even, if they go into a room, as long as they're a nice person, they have as much right to be in that room as everybody else. Please remember that when you go there. And think about that, that you're kind and generous. The first principle of networking is, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Who can I introduce you to? And the greatest gift we can all give to anybody is that gift of time and our genuine interest when we meet people. And yes, we're all a bit nervous, but we're, everybody's nervous. I am nervous, that's why I get there early. I'm going to be friendly. Sorry, I shouldn't be looking. And if you're going to a business event, remember this, everybody's looking for some business opportunity. We all have something in common. Now, this one. Has anybody heard of a man, my guiding light, who got me out of accountancy into what I'm doing now? A man called Dale Carnegie. Anybody heard of him? He wrote a book. No, he didn't. He wrote the book. What was the book called? How to Win Friends and Influence People. Written in 1935. Think about it. Let's just focus for one second on the book. How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you cannot win friends and influence people, guess what? You're not going to get business. I think that was the first book on networking. There was no mention of it, but he wrote the book. And one of the many quotes that are timeless is coming up now. He said this, the most interesting people we ever meet are those who are most interested in us. So when you go to an event and you want to be perceived as the most interesting person, just forget about yourself, take the focus off yourself and make sure you ask about them. Because them is their most Im important and favourite subject. You're looking for your aha moment. This weekend, you are at every event you go to, you are looking for an aha moment or a light bulb moment. So if you go to an event outside here today and you meet somebody and you have a nice chat with them and you're brave enough to get to a point where you say, do you mind me asking you, who are your accountants? And they say, uh, we use RSM and you ask a few questions. You say, how do you find them then? And they say, well, we don't get value for money out of them and they're not very proactive. Have you ever, ever pe heard people say that? Not very proactive. They don't really understand our business. If ever you hear that, that is called an aha moment. And when I run my follow-up workshop, when you hear an aha moment or a light bulb moment like that, that is your big indicator to start your follow-up. And I want you to follow up with a phone call. Does anybody know you can still talk into these? <laughs> I mean, most of you are of an age where you do. But you talk to 25-year-olds, they'd rather eat their left arms and pick up the phone. Isn't that right? They'd rather send an email or a text. I think some of them would rather go via Instagram or WhatsApp or whatever it is. The phone is the key. And again, later on, I'll tell you how, you, how to set up that phone call. And finally, if I was staying for the weekend, I can't, Mrs. Kintish has demanded I go home, but if I was staying for the weekend, I would treat this as a party. And I want you to treat it as a party, and I want you to treat every event you go to as a party. The only difference between going to a business event and going to a social event is the amount of alcohol. Isn't that right, Lorraine? <laughs> Except in Lorraine's case... She's on eight gin and tonics anyway, it doesn't matter to her. <laughs>